Uh, a year ago, a little over a year ago, I seen an article in a mag one of the carving magazines. I don't even know exactly what carving magazine it was, but it was an article on carving this gun stock by Bill Jennings. Uh, it kind of piqued my interest a little bit. I've been carving since 1997 and I've never found a niche. I've done just about everything I can think of, but I have never found anything that really drew me into it. So I, out of the uh, article in that magazine I had was offered this book. Gunstock Carving by Bill Jenny. Now, he gives all kinds of demonstrations. I'm not selling him. I called him and I talked to him. Uh, he gives uh, lessons in, out in Arizona and he gives some in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, they're quite pricey, more than I wanted to pay. I paid $20 for his book. This is the results. Uh, anybody can if you spend enough time on it, I guess you can do it. But anyhow, I read this book, I got this book, and I, first of all, I'm going to say I don't know a whole lot about guns. I don't, I, I've had, this one here was my original shotgun I bought when I was 14 years old. It had a plastic stock on it and a plastic four stock. I paid $15 for it. I hunted that with that gun all my life. I didn't know anything about guns. It loosened up in here. There's a long pin goes through here, tightens it up. It loosened up. I just kept shooting. Finally, it broke off here. So I took it down to a uh, gunsmith. That actually is Alan Bobbs. That's how long they've been in business. And I had him put this wood stock on. And I hunted with it for years with that plastic four stock and that. Well, then I quit hunting. And of course, the gun sat in the closet for a long, long time. Well, when I seen this article, I uh, thought, well, this is something I can do with this gun. Try to make something out of it. And of course, being a wood carver, I just happened to have a piece of walnut around. So I replaced that plastic with this here. I built three of them until I felt one that I felt comfortable with and that I could get a good pattern on it. So I kept reading that book and kept reading that book, and I did things kind of backwards, I guess. I read it over and read it over, and I decided, well, I might as well do it. I didn't practice. I started carving. I didn't carve on the gun stock first. I started out on this because I figured I can always replace this. So I, I went in his book, and he's got all, it's a good book. It's got all kinds of patterns in it. It's got uh, leaves, uh, it gives you a lot of instructions, but in the back here there's all kinds of pictures, any kind of animal, things that you can use to uh, go on the, put on your gun stock. He has some that are in there that you can use just the way they are. This is one that I did, it's a, it's a, a pattern that he has in, a, in his book. I had this man bring me this gun. It's a single. This is before I I done anything with it. It was all dinged up, so I sanded it all down, took all the nicks and the scratches and everything out of it. The only problem was he was right-handed, and the pattern was for a left-handed person. You always want to have it so that the cheek. That's what, that's how you determine on what side of the stock you're going to carve on it. So I used the old technique that everybody here knows, the sliding glass door and a paper, and I traced it backwards. So that's how I ended up making the pattern for that. And the uh, abacus leaves I got out of this book here, Bill Jennings' original book. After I carved three guns, I bought these other ones because I didn't want to use the same patterns over again. This particular book here, all it is, it's, it's, it is a relief carving book. It's got all kinds of patterns in there. 
you can take something and make something out of nothing out of there. There's a pattern that is in that book, two pages. I copied them with a, just a simple copying machine that I have, halves. Then I put them together and I reduced it. And of course then I drew the line so that it fit. I want it on here. So I put it on there and the horns on the second buck would not fit on there, so I made it a doe. But, <laughs> so you can do just about anything you want if you want to fiddle with it. And I fiddled with all mine. When I first started out doing his, the way he describes in his books, he describes putting on the patterns first on here and then he determines where he wants the, the lines to go. And this, if there's nothing wrong with it because I did it. This is the way I did this one here. But I got lazy and I wanted to change things so I kind of got away from the way he wanted to do things. But the abacus leaves I carved first and then I fit the, the uh, basket weave in there. This is just to show you so everybody can see without getting real small. This is, this is the same basket weave. I just exploded it in there. And the way that you start this, and you put your basket carving, you get your pattern on. I'll tell you how we do the pattern later. But you start out with a sharp little burr. I, these are the burrs that I have basically that I use, no more than that. The one that I use the most is this one right here. It's got a real point on it and it's got a real mild taper on it. You just outline it. And you try to, on, on this here, you try to do it because you're holding the gun whichever way you want it like this. You carve here, carve here. You go down about 3 30 seconds of an inch for depth. Just follow all your lines. Get all the lines that go that way. And make sure when you're doing it, uh, you look down, look down there and uh, make sure all your lines parallel follow. And then you turn your, go all the other way. So then they, and you get them all lined up. And once you got all this all taken out, then you take a ball burr and you take all these here reliefs. You relief all these here. That's where you get the relief and the squares. Uh, you go up to an eighth of an inch. First you use a ball burn and go through the pattern and you kind of line it up. And when you get that all taken care of and you got all this here, you peel the pattern off. Now this one here you got to peel off because you're touching every direction. Each little piece of the pattern is left on it. You'll have to skim it all off. And then I take a, a barrel burr. Everybody knows what a barrel burr is. No, I don't. Round, straight, cut on the bottom. I use all the diamond burrs. And then you go, you go into these areas and work them all out. And you try to get your depth. And when you're doing this, make sure that you don't go into your line so that you don't have a jagged line here or here. You go through all of the, get those all done. And uh, then after you do that, you got that all taken care of. You got it all lined up. Then you go here and you start tapering these here. Up to the middle. Taper it. You start one way, one direction. You do all these here. You're holding your gun. Everything is that way here. Do all those. Deep here, you leave a groove along here. You do all those. And then again, you turn and you start doing these here. Make sure you don't do it here. You'll do just the ends. And so that you get that concave, you work that out. That's why it's, that one there is the easiest to do. Easier to do than we call this fish scale or chain mail. 
So this is what I done. You can see here how I, I laid the pattern out. This is how I became doing this. I figured out how I wanted to do this. I laid it out on the gun like this here so I can see what I have. I, I made the pattern from these here. And once I do that, the old rubber cement. I just glue the back of these on and I put it on a regular piece of copy paper so that I got all the things that I want. I put that in the copy machine and I started out going to Hobby Lobby. That's the first place I looked and I found this packet. It's got a CD and everything else in there. It's a label packet to make stick on labels. Uh, but the paper was white. Now this here looks white too, but if you peel the back off, you can see that it's translucent. And you just put that in your printer, do your copy, make sure you turn it over this way here, or you'll have a, your print on the back. But just tape it in, and then you'll come up with all your pieces, your label. And I was saying earlier here, see how I've got these all laid on here? I'll just take a piece of uh, tape and put it sliding underneath. I take again my magic marker and I just put a mark on here. This locates it before I peel these off to put on the paper. That way there you know just exactly where you're going to put it back onto the gun. Before you start doing that, you got to fi figure out your center lines. You use the, the, paper, uh, the tape again and just put it on the middle you line up your center lines and you always measure from them when you're trying to figure out and do that. And the easiest way I found to do that, I robbed my, mother, my wife's sewing basket. It's flexible. <laughs> and you're not, it's only got eight inches, but you're not getting real uh, a fancy, you're not getting down to millimeters or anything else to get that, you can always line it up. And uh, then, and sometimes like here where I put, I'm going to put my signal, I just put some tape on there and I write it in there with a marker pen and that's what I, I use so that it gives me a pattern. This particular one here comes off of a 30-30 rifle. I have never done a rifle. I never owned a rifle. Uh, all, of, all I ever done was shotguns. So I got tired of doing burns and ducks and things like that so then I thought well I gotta have a mammal so I gotta have a rifle and this here I started out these here patterns all come together in different things and now I what I do is I like to work it in a circle I'm just enough artist to know what a French curve is I use and this comes handy too when you're laying out your thing your uh, hand on the uh, grips See how you can, you can just, there's several sizes, you buy a pack. Now you're asking, how do we do the chain mail? <laughs> you start out with a little larger, they call it football. You start here and you work down. Work down. Start right on one side. If you're right hand or left hand, you either go one way or another. But you go all the way across through the pattern. And what I'm talking about going through the pattern, if you do it correctly and you peel it off, you'll come off in one piece. You don't want to go right up to the line so that you break it. You just start here, 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 and you just swoop it. This here, you're going to go you do the same thing all the way across and you start the next row do the same thing and when you're doing that make sure that you, you all got a good eye or we wouldn't be carving keep that line as close as you can and it'll make your, your uh, um, chain mall uh, exact or as close to being exact First you do the whole thing, all go all the way down, like I said, so that you'll end up with this and you peel it off. Once you peel that off, you turn it over and you take a barrel, a small it slid away from me. <laughs> Anyhow, you take the straight the straight barrel 
and you start at the top and you do the rounding points. And another thing when you're doing this, because you'll have a hump there, make sure that this, try to keep this line perfect. As close as you can to being perfect. You go, and you come right up to the edge of where you're coming down here, but there will be solid wood in here. Get these here all the same size, as close as, it would be just like doing your fish when you're doing it. And then once you get that all rounded off, then you turn it back over again, and you go back to the sharp point, and you connect it. You go right up, and you're taking out more stock. Doing a pattern. Keep, keep following your, either go one way or back and forth, whichever is more comfortable to you. Once you got them all broken off, that pretty well establishes where you want to go. Then I go back to the larger and smooth all out, touch up a little bit, make your radiuses true up. You go over the whole thing again, all the way down. And then, after you do that, I use these here. They're, pot, they're, they're grinding stones. You can use this, and I use a little round one. Now you're going to ask, where do I get them from? I buy most of my stock. I'm not pushing them, but I most, buy most of my stuff from this company. It's in Florida. They, they, once you get a catalog, you'll get thousands of them. But they've got every kind of shape and size, burrs, everything you want in there, and they're fairly inexpensive. I even bought my, this is the grinder I use. I bought the grinder there, my other ones wore out. It's a nice outfit for, I think it's, uh, let's see here, $200. And it's got enough RPMs. That's one of the things with when you're doing gunstock carving, the higher RPMs you got, the better you are. Now if you want to buy one of those turbo carvers, then you get 400,000 RPMs, and of course you're going to spend a lot of money for it. It's going to be easier to use. But if you want to put that kind of money into it, it's up to you. I like can see here, this one here is not as extensive, but this here, Picture of the fox came out of this book. I use this pattern, came out of this book, and then ended up on this. Now this one here I incorporated letters in and I got this wording in here because they had a title in the book there. It says Red Fox Resting. So I got creative and put carved the letters there. So I mean you can do whatever you you know, you're used to doing carvings, and you're going to do their stuff. This is another double barrel, old double barrel shotgun I did. I worked out the pattern. This is for the four stock, this is for the grips, and this is on the... This one here I have, I have a woodcock on it. You can see, and you notice how I did that again? with the sliding doors and another piece of paper. You just put it on the window, trace it, and you get your pattern. Then I reduced it on the, my, my uh, coffee machine has what they call a postcard size on it. It's four by eight. When I put it on that, it comes, seems to come right in to what I need. I started with that. And I ended up with this. The French curves again come in play here, where I like the circle stuff. It kind of ties everything together, it expands the seam. You can do as much or as little as you want on each side. These are quite large, it fills up the whole side. And of course, on all these here, you always do both sides of the grip. But I added a little bit down here, even though it doesn't interfere with your cheek. And this is the reason, this is the uh, mating half to the four stock. I done that with the, ba the basket weave. Uh, when you're 
laying out your patterns on here, I try to, and it, and it explains it in that book too, is you try to follow whatever the stock is. Now like these, this stock here, the only part that I carved on it was the actual parts that I carved. I didn't do anything with the finishing on the rest of the gun. I didn't refinish it at all. And if you're real careful, you don't go over the edge. Now when I'm doing these here lines, I take that, of course that's in my pattern. I got a line on there. I take that sharp burr I have. And I'm not, you get a little bit of this. And then I have five wood files that, actually they're not wood files, they're steel files that I had left over from my tool and die, tool and die days. This one is a nice one, it's broken now. But you can smooth that all right out by just rubbing it in there and you shape it the way you want it. Tilt it a little bit. If you got too much of a wobble, make your line a little bit wobber. You got all kinds of uh, ways to do it. I got these here. These are all diamond files. I got these out of this book. When you're putting areas this here, big areas when you're open there, you just go in there and you flatten them out. You can either shine it or keep it flat. Use your files like this to smooth it out. Or you can pat, put a pattern there and just dimple patterns. Now these here dogs came out of this book also, but I reduced them in size. They were big. Just reduce them and fit them in. This one here is going to, I'm, I'm not sure how, I'm, I'm going to spoil my gun, I think. But what I'm going to do, you see these dark spots here? I'm putting a Petoskey stone in there. There's going to be Petoskey stones, three Petoskey stones. Just for something different. Now when I said I, I went backwards on these here, I started out carving right on a stock. I didn't do any practice. When I was built, I was redoing a 12 gauge, double barrel 12 gauge, I was putting a stock on it, and I was trying to make a stock for it, and I messed it up. So I just set it aside and cut another one. So after I got all that done, I started doing these. I split it in half. <laughs> and I just traced, you just take that, and you trace around the shape, lay it on the wood, trace it around there, cut it out. The old fashioned. This here is actually from a body shop. It works good. You use your use your uh, your other equipment you have, your big burrs, your regular burrs, my my Fordham, you know, with the big burr on it, flame burr to shape. This was my wife's idea to put the backing on here. I just went down and I bought a frame, and she said, "Well, let's go on to the fabric shop and put fabric on, and it made it." You can either hang it on the wall or just use it for display, whatever you want. So there's a lot of things that you can use these for. The more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Just like anything else, just like your other carving. Uh, if you're not, if you're too afraid to start out on a gun, you can go down to uh, any of the big box stores and buy. You only need a one inch stock piece of wood really to do this, something like this. That'll give you the idea how you can lay it out. You'll learn how to lay out. And that's why I say when you just kind of trace it around and just round it off. On these here, this here, I, I did, took no plastic because it didn't come with anything. So I put walnut, I used walnut and shaped it. This here is white oak just to kind of accentuate it. This gun here I bought for $80 at uh, Allen Bob's. It's a single barrel 12 gauge. Uh, I like the color of the wood because I've been doing the walnut. And uh, I didn't do any, like I said earlier, I didn't do anything with the stock. I took the uh, butt plate off just so that I wouldn't scratch it if I happen to mess around. But then you just, whatever your pattern, you stay inside of your pattern and then you uh, 
just put, I, I use um, pre-stain, put that on there and that kind of smooths everything out, or not smooth it out, but I mean it evens everything out. Of course, you're still going to have some lines because whatever in this wood is going to be in your background. Uh, then after I stain it, I use the only stain I use on them. I don't have it here anyhow. Natural stain, uh, Minwax natural stain. So then I just put on, and, and when you're staining on here, because you got the original stock there, you can just wipe it right off, you know, and it'll only stick on what you don't have stained. And then, again, I'm not pushing out the bobs, but they're a handy source. Go down there and they have this true gun oil. You just take a brush and put it on like stain, and that's another tip, those of you who have airbrushes, once you put all this stuff in there, use your spray nozzle and blow it out and then wipe it off again, blow it out and wipe it in off until you get all of it so it leaves all your lines and uh, otherwise the oil and the stain will fill up the little uh, intricate parts of your carving. I bought several books. This one here, if you're really into the old-fashioned way, this is all done. This book explains on how to do it with your gouges and your knives. This one here is another power carving book. But he uses scrolls, a lot of the scroll stuff. And he just don't do animals, he does I really bought the books for the patterns until I realized that I can make my own pattern. I think we all do that. So you have the scrolls, this leaves, this is a pattern. Concludes it. Thank you.